Hello! So today I'm going to be talking about The Library at Mount Char by Scott Hawkins. First published in 2015 and I believe this is his only published piece of work. A genre-bending thrill ride. It's part horror, part fantasy, part sci-fi and part thriller. It's surreal, absurd, funny and utterly, utterly bonkers. It is also so much bloody fun. It's really hard to find comparison points to this book because it is so unique. It is pulling from so many different places, so many different genres, so many different themes are running throughout it. However, it did give me kind of early good Chuck Palahniuk vibes. And also it's got a bit of an Umbrella Academy thing going on. Uh, there's only one book that I could think of that made me feel exactly the same way I felt whilst reading this. And that would be Warren Ellis's Crooked Little Vein. Both of these books are equally absurd, surreal, bonkers, thrilling and move at a breakneck pace. This book is also just so unpredictable in the best way possible. It's one of those books that's really hard to talk about because it shifts gears so quickly that really you can't mention anything without it being a spoiler. And as always, and this kind of applies to most books anyway, but this is the kind of book that the best way to approach it is to go in knowing very little at all. But of course this is a review and I am going to talk about it. This isn't a spoiler warning because I don't think I'm going to really spoil that much in this book or I'm going to try my bloody best not to. But if my enthusiastic opening to this review has piqued your interest in this book and made you possibly want to check it out, then I would suggest click off this video. Just buy it, read it and then come back because I went into this book knowing nothing at all and I'm so glad I did it that way. So what's it about? A man named Father, who could or could not be a god, has kidnapped a bunch of orphaned children all between the ages of 8 to 12. He takes them to the library, their new home. They are to become his students. And each of them is given a catalogue to learn. Inside the library, time passes differently from normal reality. It runs slower, which gives the students a massive amount of time to learn their catalogues. I completely forgot to mention that when we are introduced to the characters in this novel, they are actually around the age of 30. One student learns all about combat and fighting and quickly becomes an absolute badass. I mean, impossible to kill. One student learns about animals and he can pretty much communicate with any animal on the planet, but his body and the way he moves is almost wolf-like. When we're introduced to this student, he doesn't really represent a human anymore. One student learns to travel the realms of the dead. She spends her days killing herself or being killed, learning how to communicate and travel through the dead realm uh, and getting brought back to life constantly. She goes through this process so much that by the time we're introduced to her, she also doesn't really represent a human anymore. Another learns healing and can pretty much cure any disease or ailment known in the universe. And she specializes in bringing people back from the dead. And then we have Carolyn our protagonist, and she learns languages, and she can pretty much communicate with every known entity, species that exists within our universe. The students have spent so much time in the library just studying their catalogues that they've just become shells of their former human selves. You would look at them and you probably wouldn't call any of them human anymore. We do have side characters in this book, all weighted kind of differently, but two of those side characters are given vast amounts of time within this book. I can't say much more than that for spoilers, but all I'm going to say is Steve is an absolute legend, and if you know, you know. We start the novel with the students locked out of the library. They can't get in, there is a sort of force field stopping them. Father is missing, he has never been gone this long before, and the students are trying to figure out a way to get back into the library and figure out what happened to Father. And you know what? I'm going to leave that there, plot-wise, because, yeah, that's all I can say. If I say anything else, I'm just ruining this book. I mean, I can say there are also some absolute badass lions in this book. I love the lions. I love them so, so much. In kind of Stephen King fashion, all of the side characters get a detailed backstory. Some obviously longer than others, but this world is just painted so richly and it is just so utterly unpredictable. So many twists, it keeps changing gears, it keeps flipping itself on you. Cut. So much fun. It's what the kids would call a WTF novel. Every chapter is throwing something new and wacky at you. It is just bursting at the seams with imagination and creativity. And I loved it for it. It's also not afraid to be really violent when it needs to be. And also when it doesn't need to be, because that's just the kind of book it is. And for some people that might be a bit of a turn off, but for me, I loved it for that. I love that it was really excessive in all aspects of its storytelling. So what did I like and what didn't I like? What I liked, 
The writing is solid. It's flowery where it needs to be, but it never overdoes it. And Scott Hawkins' control over the dialogue is really good. Pacing is fantastic. It never slows down, yet somehow manages to pack in so much character development. I loved all the characters. They're cartoonish, they're exaggerated, but of course they have to be to exist within a novel like this. I loved how unpredictable it was, and as I've already said, I just loved the imagination and creativity that's been thrown into this book. What didn't I like? Nothing. There is nothing I didn't like about this book. For the type of book that it's trying to be, and what it's trying to achieve, there is not one single thing in it that I didn't love. I just, yeah, there's nothing in it that I'm like, I didn't like that. Of course, it's not a piece of literary fiction, you know, it's not changing my world, it's not teaching me about the world, but it's not trying to do that. It is a fun, thrill ride, imaginative, creative, bizarre, weird, fantasy, horror, thriller, sci-fi style book that's hard to define, and I found nothing in it that I didn't like. So yeah, there's nothing I didn't like. Now I'm not a professional critic, I'm just some guy who reads books and likes talking about them, and I can guarantee you there'll be a lot of stuff in here that a lot of readers won't get on with, but I can also guarantee that every reason someone could give for why they didn't like this book is probably the reason why I loved it. So yeah, I'm just not going to give any critiques in that regard, because to me, there's nothing in it I didn't like. So if you enjoy fantasy, read this. If you enjoy horror, read this. If you enjoy thrillers, read this. And if you enjoy sci-fi, read this. It is for all of you. However, if you enjoy literary fiction, don't read this. I don't think this is a book for you at all. I could be totally wrong in that regard, but I don't think it's got enough going on philosophically, politically. It's not talking about the world in that way that people who are fans of literary fiction would probably want from their reading. But you never know. I've been wrong about these things before. So you could love literary fiction like I do and also love this book. So it's really hard for me to say whether you, you will or you won't. My one caveat might be if you don't like excessive and over-the-top violence, then probably don't read this. I'm going to give this book five stars out of five. I thought it was fantastic and just so much fun. So unpredictable, so many twists, so many turns. It's over the top. The dialogue is handled brilliantly. It builds a wonderful world. I was constantly guessing and getting things wrong. It was always surprising me. Yeah, I'm just going to ramble really. I thought it was fantastic. Five stars. This book is 460 pages long and I read it in two sittings. I would have done it in one really, but I'd just gone a little bit sleepy, a little bit sleepy. Now, as I mentioned at the start, I believe this is Scott Hawkins' first full-length published novel uh, all the way back in 2015, and it is criminal. Criminal that we haven't had another book from him. I don't know whether he's quit writing. If anyone out there in booktube knows any more details about why we haven't got another book from Scott Hawkins, please let me know. But I will read anything this man writes after reading this. That's how much fun I had. But yeah, Booktube, Bookworld, if you know anything about why we haven't got another book, maybe he quit writing. I do, from the blurb, it says that he's a computer programmer as well. Maybe he's just concentrating on that. Maybe this was a one and done kind of thing and it's all he had in him. I don't know. But yeah, I would love or I would be really, really excited if I heard or knew that something new was coming out from Scott Hawkins. So Booktube World, please let me know. So have you read this book? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Please let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I haven't said this in a while, but please subscribe if you like my style reviews or give the old thumbs up on them. It helps out the old algorithms and stuff like that. It means more people can see what I do. Um, and if you don't like it, yeah, thumbs down it. <laughs> That's fine. Um, uh, I'll see you all in the next one. Uh, thanks for watching.